Did you just say lightsaber? I think you mean lifesaver. We've all at some point in our lives tried these cute little round candies. They were real joyous children. We got to taste different flavors and even trade with our friends. We would play games and stick our fingers through them. However, sometimes it's not all fun, as there's something sinister behind these colorful candies. Here are 10 lifesaver facts that will change your life. What, like the candy? Maple sugar. Is there sugar in syrup? Yes. Clarence Crane, the inventor of Lifesavers, was a successful businessman. His father was a maple sugar producer, and Clarence worked with him until 1903, when he then decided to branch out and form his own company. His company quickly emerged as the largest producer of maple sugar in the world. Two years later, Clarence sold his maple sugar business and started the Queen Victoria Chocolate Company. He realized that many people refused to buy chocolate in the summer months because they melted easily in the heat. Oh God, it's so hot. So in 1912, he invented a summer candy, which was peppermint that could withstand the heat. He later got the idea to change the shape of the candy to resemble a traditional ring-style life preserver, also known as a lifesaver. He did this to compete with the European mints that were square and flat. Initially, Lifesavers only came in peppermint flavor. Crane marketed the candy as Peppermint Lifesavers as a breath mint, claiming on the packaging that it was for that stormy breath. In 1913, Crane sold the rights to Lifesavers to a New York candy manufacturer. They changed the packaging to better preserve the candy and marketed the candy to saloon owners to give their patrons in order to improve their breath after drinking and smoking. Lifesavers soared into popularity. Aren't I the popular one? The company was sold for $2,900. Sold! After trademarking the company in 1912, Crane sold the rights to Peppermint to Edward Noble in 1913 for a mere $2,900. Edward Noble, already a candy industrialist and later founder of ABC American Broadcasting Company, was rich and famous in his own right. Noble helped promote the Lifesavers brand and turn it into what it is today. He changed things by eliminating the cardboard packaging, which was unsuccessful, and repackaged them to keep the mints fresher. Don't eat the big white mints. <laughs> This process was done by hand until 1919, until his brother, Robert Noble, developed machinery to streamline the process. Robert was CEO and primary shareholder of a Lifesavers brand for more than 40 years until it merged with Beech Nut in 1956. Together, they significantly expanded the market by installing Lifesavers displays next to every cash register at restaurants and grocery stores. He also encouraged owners of these establishments to give customers a nickel in change to encourage sales. The slogan, still only five cents, helped Lifesavers to become a favorite treat for children. Crane remained involved in the candy business for the remainder of his life, but not with Lifesavers. He formed another company called the Crane Chocolate Company in 1916. It did well, but not as well as the Lifesavers brand did with future generations. Our generation's got everything under control. A pharmaceutical accident. It was an accident. There are no accidents. The whole notion came about accidentally while Crane was at the pharmacy purchasing flavoring extracts. He noticed their pill making machine producing round flat pills and figured this would be perfect for his peppermints. Single punch tableting machines are commonly used in the pharmaceutical industry. They are high speed machines that create thousands of tablets in a small period of time. Crane hired a pill manufacturer to make the package for his mints. What are you eating? Junior mint. But there was an issue. The pill machine kept poking holes in the middle of the candy. Crane thought they looked like life preservers, and that's what he called them, lifesavers. In 1925, technology improved to allow a hole in the center of fruit candies, introduced as the fruit drop with the hole, and came in orange, lemon, and lime, each packaged in their own separate rolls. The new flavors quickly became popular with the public, especially the kids. See that candy store? Candy? Candy! The gift that keeps on giving. Would you like it gift wrapped? In the late 1930s and early 1940s, five new mint flavors were introduced. Molasso Mint, Sparrow Mint, Choco Mint, Sticko Pep, and Cristo Mint. 
Aside from the mints, four original clear drop candy flavors were introduced shortly thereafter. They were anise, butter rum, cola, and root beer. These were not as popular as the fruit drop flavors and were eventually discontinued. In 1927, cherry flavor was introduced and subsequently a cough drop with menthol, but it was not successful either. Kids don't usually like medicinal flavored anything. The same year also saw a new tropical flavor, pineapple. Everyone's favorite, the classic five flavor roll were introduced in 1935. Pineapple, lime, orange, cherry, and lemon. Really? Mm -hmm. With my lemons. Aside from that, the flavor lineup hasn't changed for nearly 70 years. It wasn't until 2003 that three of the flavors were replaced making the rolls pineapple, cherry, raspberry, watermelon, and blackberry. However, orange was subsequently reintroduced and blackberry was dropped. In 1992, Lifesavers gummies were introduced to the lineup of Lifesaver products. The flavors came in three varieties, five flavors, grape, and mixed berry. That being said, the only thing that really changed throughout the years has been ownership, as it's merged and was bought out by different companies over time. You're in a company now. You have to find your right place. All about mergers and acquisitions. Before we formalize this merger, are there any outstanding questions we might address? The Lifesavers brand went through a series of mergers and acquisitions, which began in 1958. Being relatively untouched for 45 years is a good track record. But did you know that they also purchased Beech Nut Life in 1968, a company that's well known for selling baby food? 13 years later, it was taken over by Squibb, which is better known as a pharmaceutical company. In 2000, Nabisco bought it over. Nabisco is better known for its cookies, and they wanted to get into the snack food business. Back in business! That didn't last long either before Kraft gobbled them up. Today, it's owned by the Mars Company. Yes, the chocolate makers, and it's more in line with the snack food business. In Canada, where things are always different and in a class of their own, the Canadian Lifesavers Company was acquired by chocolate makers Hershey Canada, and then by Beta Brands and eventually by Kraft Foods. They also expanded their line to include the Lifesavers Gummies, Lifesavers Minis, Cream Savers, and Lifesavers Fusions. Discontinued varieties include Fruit Juicers, Poles, Lifesaver Lollipops, and Squeeze It. In 1995, a Lifesavers drink was introduced to compete with Snapple and Fruitopia, but was quickly discontinued. Not for Sale. Old holiday traditions. Happy human holiday, Dad. Lifesavers has kept its squeaky clean image for many years. In fact, they have been a model of political correctness. They were so loved that during World War II, other candy manufacturers donated their sugar rations to keep Lifesavers in production for the armed forces as a reminder of home. In the 80s, they had a special holiday edition gift set for kids that were particularly good all year round. The box storybook contained a full 10 rolls of different flavors. There's lots of flavors out there. Set in a book called The Sweet Storybook. The Lifesaver book was packed with the classic five flavor roll. With the Lifesaver flavor pack, it was always exciting or disappointing to see what flavor came up next. Where's your Christmas spirit? The inventor's son committed suicide. This will be the mistake of your life. Lifesavers was invented by Clarence Crane in the early 1900s in Garrettsville, Ohio, USA. He may be well known for having invented this popular candy, but he also had a famous son, Hart Crane. Hart was hailed as being one of the most influential poets of the century. Born in 1899, Clarence's only son, Hart Crane, had many issues. His mother, Grace Edna, suffered from mental illness. His parents' marriage was a difficult one, and they divorced in 1917. He dropped out of high school, moved to New York, and took different copy writing jobs, living with different friends, and became a heavy drinker. In the early 1920s, some literary magazines published some of his work, and he gained notoriety. It was while working on his epic poem, The Bridge, that his drinking got worse and it became a serious problem. While in Paris in 1929, he started a brawl over a tab at a bar. He was beaten, arrested, and jailed. You are under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. After six days in prison, a friend bailed him out and gave him some money to go back to New York, where he finished his work, but it received poor reviews and the sense of failure became too much for him to handle. While in Mexico on a fellowship in 1932, his drinking continued as he suffered bouts of depression and struggled with his personal demons. On a voyage back from the Caribbean in 1932, he committed suicide by jumping overboard the ship Oribaza while traveling back to New York. After hours of search and rescue, you, the body was declared lost at sea and was never recovered. You've never seen a dead body before, have you? 
Urban legend. Like what, E.T.? <laughs> no. Uh, it's an urban legend. Yeah. There's an urban legend around this favorite candy, which is such that the inventor created the Life Preserver style candy after his daughter choked to death. His reasoning for creating the Lifesaver candy with a hole in the middle was that so if it lodged in your throat, you would still be able to breathe through the hole in the candy. I want candy! Hence the name. It is said that the inventor created it so to prevent anyone else from choking to death. Further urban legend has it that he was so distraught after his daughter's death, he committed suicide. So we all know by now that this urban legend is false. Clarence Crane did not have a daughter. He only had a son by the name of Harold Hart Crane, who lived till the ripe age of 33. His son never choked on any candy and died, but rather committed suicide from depression. Clarence Crane also did not kill himself. He went on to become a successful businessman. He went on to other ventures and started other companies. He died a year before his son killed himself and never got to see his heir's demise. He's gone. A sign of the times. It's time. When it first began, Lifesavers only came in peppermint flavor and was more of a mint than a candy, then called Peppo Mint. Crane came up with the slogan for that stormy breath, playing on the nautical theme. It may sound gross, but it worked. Crane's Lifesavers also had an ironic popularity since it was also the year that Titanic was lost at sea in 1912. For years to come, the ads centered around its shape and images of the water, beach life, and the sea, emphasizing its freshman flavors and fresh breath. After Lifesavers was sold to Edward Noble, their marketing changed to focus more on children. They used the slogan, still only five cents, to highlight its affordable cost. It was also marketed as the candy with a hole, which was obvious to everyone. What's so obvious about it? During the depression and times of war, it was hard to get sugar and candy, and it was considered a luxury item. So Edward Noble marketed it as a more affordable product and small treat to make people forget about hard times. Lifesavers became part of American history, with slogans such as fish in your pocket for a little old nickel, and for a breathtaking rescue. It catered mostly to children who would play games with the candy and quickly pop them in their mouths. Get in my van and I'll give you some candy. Okay. All the flavors you can imagine. Combine one flavor with another and something new was created. We all know they started off as mints. The original flavor was peppermint. Six years later, six other flavors were introduced. Winto green, clove, licorice, cinnamon, violet, chocolate, and these remain the standard flavors until the late 1920s. Nice play on words trying to figure them out. When the company began to produce solid fruit drops with holes in the center, they came in orange, lemon, and lime, each packaged in their own separate rolls until they created the five flavor pack in 1935. In 1931, the Lifesavers cough drop was introduced with menthol, but it was not successful either. The same year brought us pineapple and cherry. In 1932, a new variety of mints called Cristo Mint was introduced the classic five flavor rolls offered a selection of five different flavors, pineapple, lime, orange, cherry, and lemon. In 2003, three of the flavors were replaced, making the five flavors pineapple, cherry, raspberry, watermelon, and blackberry. But the best blackberries are right at the very top. In the late 1930s and early 1940s, four new mint flavors were introduced. Molasso mint, Sparrow mint, Choco mint, and Sticko pep. In 1981, once purchased by Nabisco brands, some mint flavors, including clove, violet, licorice, and cinnamon, were discontinued due to poor sales. Nabisco introduced a new cinnamon flavor called hot cinnamon. The other original mint flavors were retired and a number of other flavors were also quickly discontinued. In 2004, Wrigley introduced two new mint flavors, orange mint and sweet mint, and revived winter green, still waiting for other magical flavors. It's hard to plan something to be magical, you know? We've got more than lifesavers on the menu, so stick around and tap on one of our other great videos. First time here? Then show us some love and tap that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.